What's going on guys? Real quick, before this video starts, I just wanted to let you all know I am going to be doing a giveaway at 100 subs, which I'll explain later on in this video, the rules and how to enter. So be sure to stick around so you don't miss out on that. The giveaway will be for subscribers only. So if you haven't already, you know what to do. Make that like button blue and subscribe if you're new. Now, Let's go ahead and get right into the video. Now in this video, I'm going to go over everything from the skill tree and progression system to the weapons, mods and crafting to replayability to what I like about the game and what I don't like. Okay, so if you haven't played this game yet, don't worry, I won't bring up any spoilers or anything like that, but just catch you guys up on what to expect when you do play it and let you make the decision if it is a game worth purchasing. But, for those of you who have already purchased the game or downloaded it via Game Pass on Xbox, then you know I can't start with anything else other than the atrocious server issues. Outriders is undoubtedly one of the worst launches for a title that I've personally played. The game will work for a mission, then you get kicked off the server. Wait 30 minutes for the server to come back up, to then get kicked out in the middle of a boss fight. Wait an hour for the server to come up, complete two missions, and in the middle of the third, get kicked off the servers. It sucks because the game itself is so good and a ton of fun, but having these server issues be as bad as they are without a doubt takes away from the game. It wouldn't be so bad if it happened every once in a while, but it happens so frequently that it's incredibly frustrating. After a few days they did however seem to get the servers up and running smoothly with no issues whatsoever, so I gotta give credit where credit is due. It doesn't seem like an issue now, but the first few days following the launch were undoubtedly some of the worst I've personally played. The server issues aside, this game is really good. Like, really good. If you are into looter shooters, this game is definitely for you. The concept of the game isn't incredibly challenging, so the casual can pick it up and have fun. While the competitive players in the genre who merge over from Destiny can pick it up and have fun. It's a nice blend of a looter shooter with RPG elements, so even fans of games such as Diablo can pick it up and enjoy the game as well. A quick briefing of the four different characters you're able to choose from are the Trickster, hit and run style manipulating time and space, the Pyromancer, mid-range combat style using flames and fire, the Devastator, close range tank style character using brute strength, and last, the Technomancer, creating gadgets and turrets out of the earth, as well as the healer or closest to the medic style of the four characters. Each have unique abilities and different ways they regenerate health, which I'll touch on later on in this video. The mod system for your weapons is done tremendously well and easy to comprehend. The green loot does not have any, blues have one, purples have two, while yellows are yellows coming with the best mods in the game, of course. The crafting system that comes along with these mods is also done exceptionally well, easy to understand, and one of the best in the genre. While completing missions and side quests along the way, you'll notice ores to mine, which will drop iron. That iron can then be used for crafting a weapon to level it up, or attach a different mod. Keep in mind, if a weapon or gear has two mod slots, you will only be able to swap out one of those mods for a different one, so be aware of that as well. But let's say you want to take a blue and turn it into purple. For that, you would need titanium, which drops from more tougher enemies such as captains and bosses, as well as dismantling purple and yellow loot. Let's say you want to change a gun from single shot to automatic or vice versa, or maybe even turn it into a burst. You can do that as well from mining iron, as previously mentioned before. So everything is laid out as plain as day, making it simple to understand, okay, if I want to do this, I have to do this first. Alright, so the rules for the giveaway are pretty simple. 
As I mentioned before, the giveaway is for subscribers only, so you must be subscribed to the channel. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. I upload breakdowns of gameplay trailers for major releases, games that might fly under the radar, or games I'm personally interested in, along with some gaming news, highlights of my streams on Twitch, and much, much more as I'm constantly looking to expand and grow the channel. Okay, the second and final rule, you must comment down below one upcoming game that you are interested in followed by the hashtag Mamba for Life. The winner will be picked at random, and the giveaway is for a free copy of either Outriders, MLB The Show, or Resident Evil 8. Once the winner is selected, I will reach out and ask which of the three games you would like and on which platform. Good luck to all of you who participate, and I look forward to hearing from you guys down in the comments section. I hope you all are enjoying the video so far, and if you are, go ahead and drop a like on it as well, as it would really help out the channel. Thank you guys so much, and again, good luck. Along with the modding and crafting comes the skill tree, which can be taken in three different directions depending on your playstyle. There's a tree that focuses primarily on your weapon damage, one that focuses on your health or healing, and one that focuses on your anomaly abilities or skills. The tree itself looks a lot more confusing and bigger at first than it actually is. The more you play and take a deeper look into it, you'll notice a lot of the skills are self-explanatory and or repeat themselves again later on to stack on top of each other. The really cool thing about the skill tree is, if you don't like the way you have it set up, say you have it all focused on your health and later on you say you know what I think I want my guns to be a little bit stronger you can respec at any time with no additional cost or losing any of the progression you already earned as I mentioned before each character has their own unique set of skills and abilities but with that also comes what really separates this game from others in the genre and takes a unique twist and that's health regen each character has a different way in which they regenerate health. Sure, it goes up partially, but in order to have it come back fully and reach maximum health again, you have to play within that character's specific playstyle. For example, the Devastator or Tank build of the game encourages you to be right up front in the middle of the action. If you're far in the back sniping, you won't regenerate health. This is both exciting and a much appreciated different approach but also confusing and causes the game to feel backwards at times. So when you're getting shot at by a ton of enemies, your instinct is to then run and duck behind cover to regenerate your health. However, in order to regenerate your health, you need to rush all the enemies shooting at you. A shooter that encourages you to get behind cover to stay alive, that also encourages you to leave cover to stay alive. I know. So there's moments where it feels almost impossible, especially by yourself because of that particular system, but also brings a nice strategic element to the game where you need to use your abilities and skills wisely in order to make up for those moments and to get you out of a tough situation that is literally life and death. This is where I'm torn because I like the strategic element, however at the same time the casual might not enjoy this as it is very confusing to grasp the concept of health regeneration and can become very frustrating very fast. But it's different, it's unique, and it's not quite as complicated as I may be making it seem. With the health regeneration system comes the enemies themselves. There are quite a few different various enemies, which is always a plus. You don't want to be fighting the same enemies over and over again throughout the game, so having specific enemies for specific locations and various amounts of them is nice. They are also incredibly smart in this game. The AI in Outriders is some of the best I've seen in any game. They're not stormtroopers at all, they very rarely, if ever, miss their shots, especially the snipers. This brings a challenge to the battlefield for sure and doesn't feel as if you can just mow through anybody with ease. There are moments where you'll knock out all the enemies in seconds and then in that same mission die three to four times because it was too difficult. 
Those who enjoy a challenge will be pleasantly surprised at the blend of ease and difficulty certain situations will be. And if the missions are in fact too difficult for you, you can always lower the world tier or difficulty down if need be. But keep in mind, the higher world tier, the better loot drop. So lowering it might mean completing the mission, but not getting the best possible loot at the same time. The missions themselves are also this weird blend of linear yet open world that I just can't quite really explain. In the middle of a mission, you might see a side quest off to the side, no pun intended, but you can make the choice of continuing the mission or taking a quick break to complete that side mission to then come back and finish off the original mission you were doing prior to it. And that's where the open world aspect comes into play, where it does give the player choices and lets them decide how they want to complete the game. Want to complete all the side quests and then do the main mission? Sure. Want to finish the main mission first and then do all the side quests or simply have a nice blend of the two? That's another way as well. The choice is really yours and up to the player. Along with the side quests and main missions are other encounters, such as hunting specific monsters, bounties for wanted targets, or historian artifacts, which is nothing more than finding items that used to be prevalent in the world before everything happened in the Outrider story. With all of these main missions, side quests, bounties, etc., is also the linear aspect that's combined with that open world feeling. Where when you do this mission, it's a very straightforward approach and you have to take this way. You can't just run around all these different locations to then come back to this mission from somewhere else. So I know it doesn't really make sense and it's hard to put in words, but it's not really an open world while at the same time not just being a simple linear style campaign either. After completing all of the main missions, you then unlock the end game aspect part of the game in Expeditions. If you're familiar with Destiny, then you'll know these are sort of like nightfalls or strikes. You'll be timed on completing the expedition. The faster you complete it, the better the loot. And also, if you die along the way, there are no respawns. So you'll then be forced to start all over and try the entire expedition again. You also do not receive any loot drops from the enemies along the way. You only receive loot when completing the expedition and you definitely get a fair share amount of it as well. As your character maxes out at 30, your guns can reach up to level 50. And while the game has been out for only roughly a week, I have four characters, all of which are fairly high with one being maxed out. Now, Disclaimer, I would say that I game a little bit more than the average or casual might, but it is a little disappointing to me that already within a week of the game being released, I've completed every single mission and side quest in the game, albeit with just one character, but still. I was hoping the game itself would be just a little bit longer than what it was. Truth be told, if the server issue wasn't as bad as it was the first couple of days, I might have reached this point even sooner. Again, I play a little more than someone else who may only play a few hours after work or on the weekends, but still just was hoping the game was a little bit longer. I do hope they plan on releasing some DLC later on in the future to extend the game's lifespan and give us extra missions, along with more weapons and gear. I also don't mind joining some of my friends games and helping them progress through the story and getting them end game ready either which is a good thing and lets you know this game does not feel repetitive even though you're completing the same mission more than once. All in all, this game is really good and really fun. However, to me, it's just not the same when playing by yourself. I personally feel like you can tell this game was designed with co-op in mind, which is nice because a lot of games seem to have forgotten about that aspect for quite some time. So keep that in mind if you're someone who doesn't have many people to play with or looking for more of that solo style game, you might like this, but it can get incredibly challenging by yourself and not necessarily boring, but just simply not as much fun as playing with a few friends or others. If you do have a bunch of friends to play with and you all hop on and help each other progress and get through the levels faster, it's definitely fun and worth getting in my opinion. If you're into looter shooters but also into RPG style games as well, then this is worth getting. 
However, if you are still unsure, I do recommend downloading the free demo if you haven't already and just try that out. It gives you a good feel on the game overall and what you could expect, but I will say the full game definitely offers more than what you would find in the demo, obviously. So again, my take on this game is, if you have a bunch of friends and people to play with and just want to hop on and kill a shit ton of monsters with special powers and skills and have a lot of fun doing it, I highly recommend this game. If you're looking for something to play by yourself, I don't necessarily recommend picking this game up unless you're really into the genre itself. But it's just not quite as fun without a group of friends. But as always, I want to hear from you guys. Have you played this game yet? Are you enjoying it? Are you not enjoying it? Are you waiting till it goes on sale to try it out later or simply skipping out on the game overall and waiting for something else? Let me know down below and I look forward to hearing from you. If you are still here at this point, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to hear what I have to say. Don't forget to click that thumbs up as it would really help out the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And also subscribe for other gaming content like this and much, much more. Thank you guys so much and I will hopefully catch you in the next one.